Welcome to Lost in the Lakes and we're back out on another wild camp. This time we're going up Lonscale Fell. Welcome to Lost in the Lakes where you get brews, reviews, and best of all, views. This is in the Lake District, just next to Skidder. And the way we're going up is just past Latrig, which is up on our left right here. We're taking this main path up to a car park along and then back up again. So I'm just looking up at uh, Lonsgale there and it's looking quite windy on top there. So we might have to hunker down on the other side, but if I'm brave enough, I'll get the tent out and pitch on the top there. It's such a quiet fell that we should be able to get a nice summit pitch. And again, if we can get a good one up there, It'll be a nice little sunrise and a sunset. Cause it's good, it's nice height and you can see all round. Right, I'm just testing out some new gear tonight. I did have more stuff, but um, I'm trying to get sort of bit of the weight down. So tonight I've got a, a new bag, a couple of other bits and pieces and a new sleeping bag. As we're venturing into summer, trying to venture into summer. I've gone for a two season sleeping bag, which is a bit lightweight and it's not down, it's primer loft. So uh, that might be interesting to see what it's like. Uh, I got it from the same company, Alp Kit. Then I did my regular bag, the Pipe Dream. So I know the uh, temperature ratings and I can kind of go off that. My other bag's starting to just get a bit too warm of a night time. So I've gone two steps to the extreme and got like uh, one that's got a comfort rating of zero. Whereas the other one that I had was like minus seven, minus eight. So uh, hopefully this one gets me through the night, but I've packed some extra stuff just in case. Got my down jacket, got my jacket that, is, that I was uh, wearing just before, but it's getting too hot. And then I've got waterproofs, obviously. So uh, I should be warm enough with both of them jackets. I'll keep me warm together in the, uh, in the sleeping bag if I need to. But um, I'm not banking on it being that cold when you're out of the wind, but uh, I think it might be a windy night tonight. So we'll see what, what it's like. The wind's not too bad at the moment. It's uh, supposed to peak at six o'clock and it's six o'clock now. So uh, we'll see what it's like in a minute. Right, we're getting up to a little spot where you've got a bit more exposure. So I can feel the wind, it's almost blowing my hat off. So I think we are maybe gonna have to hunker down a bit further. I was just speaking to a, uh, a fell runner and he said there is some stuff over the far side you can actually shade from. So if it's too bad on the top, I mean, I might give it a go and I might just, you know, pitch the tent, see what it's like before I get the gear out. And if it's too bad, we'll mosey on a bit further. So far, this bag, this is the first time I've wore it properly. I sort of fitted it out in the shop and uh, wore it with some weight in at home. and. Uh, so far, it's feeling quite comfortable. I've had to adjust it slightly. I forgot about the certain straps up at the top that pull it in. I was getting a bit of a niggly shoulder then. I'm like, oh, it's a frame bag. So you pull them in and it makes it so much better. As far as weight's concerned, uh, this bag sits on you differently to my other bag. The other one tends to sort of hug you. Whereas this one sits more on your back and you've got a bit more room. I mean, there is a difference in literage, this being a 48 and the other one being a 64, but also the framing system's different. This one, I think the main difference is the weight and it's not just the bag. I mean, I've knocked two kilos off the bag weight, but I've also made a couple of differences with the stuff that I've got. That's another, I think I've knocked another two kilos off with uh, just using lighter weight gear. 
So I'm being a bit more choosy about what I'm doing. So this is more of a test to see what it's like going up higher mountains, longer days in the fells where you want a lighter pack. I thought I could hear someone speaking then. It's just a load of sheep. Right. I've just put this jacket back on and the wind's died down. When the wind dies, this time of year it just gets really hot. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna keep going. So this hopefully is gonna be my first proper summit camp, actually on the summit of a mountain. And it's a rain Wayne Wright as well. And uh, I think it's gonna get possibly a little bit battered by the wind. Now I've been assured by many a YouTuber that these tents are bomb proof. And I have been underconfident with it and been very surprised with the results. When I've been out, or just sitting in the tent and you think it's a little bit windy and then you get out and you realize how windy it actually is. So I suppose that's a good confidence boost or it should be, but I'm never overly confident until I've actually been through it and done it myself. And I will get a, uh, a wind speedometer, but I need to do the research on it because I know these cheap ones, they can gust and they can oscillate and give you some false readings. I mean, yeah, they do oscillate, but they can, they can almost give you a, a double reading too far, especially in higher winds. So I'm doing some research in it. I don't want to get a cheap, crappy Amazon thing. I want to get a good, crappy Amazon thing that hopefully does the job. And, uh, you know, there's a big jump up between the professional grade ones and uh, the ones, little pocket ones as well. So really I want to get proper, I think they're called anim anim anmeter, animeters. Do some proper wind tests with uh, instruments that uh, show you the speed and the gust and everything. Oh. I know you can get these wireless ones, so you can pop it outside your tent. A lot of these, you know, people just stick your arm out the tent or as you're walking along, so you could probably get false results. So maybe we could get a remote one, keep it outside the tent and monitor it from inside the tent, which would be brilliant. But I just need to be confident with the equipment that I've got. I'm not one of these where I'll be happy at failing on me especially when I've just paid a lot of money for it. But it'll be also good to see what, what it can do. Okay, so summit's in sight. Just gonna go up over here. Look back over there, you can see little man and skidder in the background. Okay, we're just on the summit of Lonscale, having a look for a pitch. Now, if there was no wind at all, I'd be like, right there but I've got to really trust myself in this one. This is the windiest conditions I've been in, probably up to about 30 mile an hour. But I really, really, really want to camp there because I've got these views here. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pitch the tent, sit in it for about half an hour. If we're all right then, I think we'll be all right for the night. We've got a couple of stones here. I think possibly the wind's coming from this direction. So we'll pitch the tent with the door. I think it should be all right facing this way. And this is as near as we can get to the summit. Look at that, you can even see Scotland that way. Right, quite windy now. So we're gonna pitch this tent in the windiest conditions I've ever pitched in. It'll pretty much hold up to anything.
Okay, so this is the tent up. I would say we're probably looking at 20 to 30 mile an hour gusts, 35 gusts, something like that. So as you can see, she's standing quite tight. We've got these points here on this one. So it does bring the tent up a bit tighter and higher, but it, what it does is it stops this stuff flapping and being like a flag. As you can tell, it is quite windy. Right, we're gonna get kit in the tent and we're gonna get set up. So I'll probably come back out, pull these guy points a bit out tighter and then we'll get settled in. Hey, we're out of the wind. Oh, starting to get a little bit chilly there. Putting the tents up, um, you know, it can get quite cold. So we're, sorry you couldn't hear the first part of it. I left the mic on my bag. Usually when I'm walking along, I'll clip it to my, uh, Got chest strap and uh, when I dumped the bag on the floor I left the mic so it's probably just all muffled so you'll probably lose that bit anyway we're in the tent she's rocking away but uh, seems to be quite sturdy uh, so I'll check the forecast like I say I'll sit here for 10 or 15 minutes just make sure that everything's all right and then I'll get unpacked might get my shoes off, just uh, get a little bit comfortable. I've got a little sit mat. I'll get that out and uh, just sort of sit here and chill for 10 minutes. Right, sat here. Wind's blown a couple of times, quite heavy. Um, and the tent's been solid as a rock. So um, I've got no data up at this point. So I'm gonna have a little wander around and uh, download some stuff for tonight. Just, uh, you know, if you're stuck in a tent for a few hours, it's always nice to watch something. I'm gonna venture outside. It's only been 10 minutes or something, but it does feel like uh, going out into the unknown. Oh. Right. Some dark clouds coming in there. Let's just get this closed up a bit. There she is. So that's what she's like in 20 mile an hour winds at the moment. Right, I'm gonna have a little wander off down the side here. And there's another little peak over there. So everything's all fine there. I might have to run back, but you see these clouds coming in. Look like uh, a bit ominous there. So we'll take a little wander over here anyway. Right. Funny actually, you know, there's the top there. And I think my tent is higher than the top. So uh, it's, it is quite a flat top mountain with this other little peak off here. Um, this is um, the backside of Blencathra. You've got Blee's Fell just coming up. Just get the screen so I can point. Blees fell coming up there, and then you've got the ridge of uh, Blees leading on to the top of the back of uh, Blencathra. Right, and this path kind of comes round here and then disappears off that way. So we'll go back onto the big track. There she is, all stood by herself. But we'll go down here and see what it's like. So looking back, that cloud's getting really low on the top of Skidder there. And I think we're slightly lower than uh, Little Man. So uh, once that starts getting into cloud, I think we'll uh, head back in. Should give us enough time. Oh, this is getting dark now. We've had all this lovely blue sky. And we're getting this low, looming cloud right this little section is brought us out of the wind so i think if uh, if we get desperate on top of there we can uh, drop down here and find somewhere maybe not quite as flat as what we've got but we could certainly uh pitch something down here and uh, hunker out of the wind for a little while in fact there is some quite nice um 
pitches down here, but it is quite boggy as well. So if that does turn out to be a rain cloud, it could get quite boggy quite quickly. So I'd probably pitch higher up and slightly off level, possibly here, something like that. But yeah, it does take you out of the wind just ever so, but probably enough. Right, we're going to go over to this peak. This is another one. Uh, I think this is called like Longsdale Peak or something like that. Let me just check the OS map. Not on the OS map, but on a different map. Uh, this is classed as Lons Lonsdale Peak. L Lonsdale Peak. Little wonder over here while we're here. Still keeping an eye. Just see a whisper cloud going over little man. So uh, quite possibly we might be getting into cloud because little man is not too far off the height of Skidder and we're not too far off the height of Little Man, well, the lower part of Little Man. So uh, it's a good indicator, because the wind's coming this way to see what the weather's gonna be like in a minute. Right, we've probably got one of the tiniest cairns, not even on the summit, so you couldn't even call it a summit cairn, but this is what I was after. Look at that. So what we've got is nice undulating mountains, nothing too untoward. And you come up to this one and then suddenly you've got basically a cliff face that's uh, huge. What we'll do is we'll walk down here and give you an idea of what it's like. So just over in the distance there, you've got Skidder House. That's the little uh, trail that goes up to Skidder House. Kind of skirts around this and then comes, it goes left, right, then left up to Skidder House. You've got this little fell in the, in the meantime here. It's another one that I've never been up. I've been up over these top ones here around Skidder. And then we've got Little Man now in cloud. So that's a, the first sign to start heading back, but we're gonna go down this way and then we can venture over that way and then onto the top. This is one, another little valley that I want to venture. And again, I think it's um, probably one that's uh, not ventured that much. Right, that cloud's getting lower. So we're gonna head back Right, the clouds lifted from Little Man and it's slightly lifting from Skidder. But it is looking dark, or a lot darker than we were. Right, here's a classic situation. We're coming to boggy territory. Now you see that lower bit there. You can probably guarantee that that becomes an absolute bog in winter, but at the moment we're solid. But this looks like a perfect place to camp. But if you've got rain, like a rain cloud like that coming up on your way, and you're in this dip here, you can guarantee that this is gonna fill up first. So if you are in this situation, look, I mean, this bit looks boggy, but there you go. Just saying that this is a dried up pond that one there, which is actually higher than this one, is not. So this is obviously deeper, and that's what will happen to uh, this pond. Let's see if we can see, see some wildlife. It's a shame I didn't bring any uh, sticks so I can see how, actually how deep this is. So look, this bit here tapers off here, comes around here. And it's actually stopped here, but you can see the actual path it takes to go to here. So it wouldn't take too much rain for this to come round and start filling that up. And that's lower, so that'll fill up very quickly. So this pond just needs to be a couple of centimetres higher for this to overflow and then start going down there. So always have a look around when you're camping. 
and see what you can see. That's quite nice on the camera. I'm still keeping a close eye on little man up there. But it looks like the clouds are just sort of sitting at that level. So the cloud level is probably about 2,500 feet, something like that. And we're around about 2,000 feet, 715 meters at the top of Lonskill. Right, so we're going to venture back up to the top and then go back into the tent. It's coming over the top, see the tent still stood. So this is going to be my first proper summit camp. I know the summit's there, but it's negligible, the distance. If I sit up in my tent, my head is higher than that cairn. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so the tent's had about an hour of um, the same sort of wind and uh, it all seems quite good. So I don't think the guys need tighten much or at all. No, they all seem pretty tight. So I've just angled these back slightly just to give it a pull that way. Um, and it all seems fine. The wind's just dropped a second now. Wind's picking up a little bit now. Gusting at maybe 30 miles, 30, 40 mile an hour. But the tent's still holding strong. You can see it really bowing in there. This side's perfect. And the wind's coming from this way. Right, while well, we're in the tent hiding from the weather, we've got this. So you notice it's a fire pot, but I've uh, got a chili con carne that I dehydrated in a ninja cooker. So we're going to give this a shot. I actually done this last week and I was going to use it, but um, I don't even know why I need it. So basically, What's that? Six ninety nine. I think this must have cost about three quid. The food and everything. So I'm going to give this a shot and see what it's like. So dehydrated um, chili con carne using a ninja cooker and then putting an old fire pot thing. Right, so managed to sort of guess the amount of water I needed for the chili con carne and had some left over for a brew. I'm going to get that stirred up. And have a brew and wait for that and see what happens. I have got a backup just in case. But hopefully now. Nah. So I thought I'd go out and have a look. See how low this cloud is now. Look at that. That's coming in. Right, well it's ten o'clock and it's mid July. It's freezing up here but I've never really done this so 
this is the first time I've spent time on mountains um, during the summer especially to this extent so I don't really know what it's like so I keep saying that oh it's really cold up here but is it always cold up here in July um, I know it's it's a different month um, it's, it's a different climate at the moment and it is quite cold like down on down on ground, ground level um, but up here I mean is it always like this do we always need two jackets in mid July um, and is it always windy I don't know but um, what I do know is it's bloody cold tonight and it is mid July so not what I was expecting but I did prepare and I've got this jacket, I've got a thermal jacket underneath and um, although I've got a lightweight sleeping bag I thought I'll just take a couple of jackets just in case. Um, I haven't jumped in this sleeping bag yet and um, it'll be interesting to see what it's like. Um, it's this Primaloft thin, like I mean ultra thin, thinner than the jacket. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what that's like compared to the uh, similar weight um, down ja down uh, sleeping bag similar price as well in fact the down down sleeping bags cheaper I mean obviously this is, has has its different properties and this is better in the wet I'm dry I'm in a tent so uh, anyway well oh, and another note I've had my chili con carne um, need to work on that it was quite dry um, I don't know whether I need to put less in or I don't know it's something I need to work on anyway it's night time now and I'm gonna go to bed and hopefully get up in the morning and there's no wind there's a forecast for the wind to drop right down from now to the morning so again that's at ground level um, there will be a bit of wind there's a little bit of rain coming in and the clouds just cleared they did I put a, I put a little time lapse on the of the rain and it's just started raining now but it's only really light rain so anyway we'll see you in the morning good night good morning right so it's uh where we are now quarter to six uh woke up at about four o'clock something like that popped outside had a quick look around and it was nice weather and i've just poked my head out now and all we've got is that. Cloud, nothing to see. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna get some breakfast on. We've got, uh, we've got muesli for breakfast. Um, I don't know whether I'm gonna warm it up or not. I'll, um, I'll have a look at the destructions and see what uh, I need to do. Right, so I was that hungry. I just finished off that uh, muesli. It was all right. Um, I think I'll probably stop getting these uh, breakfasts because you could, you know, they're quite easy to make yourself. They're already dried, most of the stuff. You know, you could just get some dried fruit and muesli and chuck it all together. And for £6.50, you could probably get about seven breakfasts. Um, and yeah, using my little Exped mat as a table, because, um, you know, it's actually quite good. Um, I could just feel that heat on the sun on my back there. Take a little look outside and see what we've got. Um, 
this sleeping bag I got, Primal Loft um, 80, so it's quite a lightweight sleeping bag. And for the price, um, it wasn't too bad. I did actually get quite cold last night, so I had to put this jacket on. Um, I suppose it's uh, it, it, its comfort rating was uh, nine degrees actually, and it was certainly less than that. So, albeit a lightweight thing, I think if I'm going to do any mountains, any height, I just um, stick to the old trusty. Um, Pipe Dreams 400 which has got a comfort rating of minus 4 or something like that I thought this one was a bit lower but there's two versions of this and this is the 80 and I think there's a 120 as well which has got a comfort rating of about 5 degrees so albeit really lightweight and for what it is it's quite warm it's not warm enough for the conditions at the moment. But be a good little summer bag. Alright. Let's venture outside. I've put my hat on, thinking it's not going to be that windy, but we'll see. <laughs> Sunshine. Right, so looks like we're just above cloud level, I think. You know, I can hear birds everywhere, but I can't see any. It's weird. Now, I imagine there's, there's some long gorse behind me. I imagine they're in there. You know, I'm gonna go find these birds. Right. I found one. <laughs> Just little tiny brown specks. Let's get this tent put in here. Put the pegs down the side, pegs, poles, all of that jazz. Right. Just keeping the load light. So there's another path that leads off the top here. In fact, there's a, there's a few. I think this little trail is the one that takes you to um, the bridal way for Lonsdale Terrace. Right, I found the, the path, obviously that the fell runner gone on. And I realise where I'm at and I've always wanted to come down here. And this is the, uh, this is the beauty of, um, going out and doing videos and looking for new places. Never been up Lonsgale Fell and I've, you know, gone, gone up for the first time ever, can of knew it was flat anyway, and camped right on the top. Now I'm coming down this trail, purely by chance I bumped into a guy who I knew who mentioned this path and uh, purely by chance I went down it. I thought I was heading off more that way um, and then the path kinked right and there's all these little sort of uh, bits where obviously sheep have been and I was going to say sheep have dug in but uh, you know you've got natural erosion and uh, sheep will probably sleep there in the, at night. I mean, you could even pitch a tent here. 
if you really wanted. Right, I think I've done 16 wild camps. I think this was my 16th wild camp. I've just sort of gone through all the mountains and uh, yeah, I think we're on 16. Does that make me experience? I don't think so. I'm still learning. I think you need to do a full year of wild camping before you can say, you know, you've, you've, you're an experienced wild camper. And when I say a full year, I mean 52 of the buggers. Now there's been 30 weeks. I'm sure I've done more than 16. I need to count this. Okay, so it turns out I've done 18 wild camps. That's not bad. Um, for five months, six months now, coming into the sixth month of camping, I missed out the uh, January. I think my first wild camp was just beginning of February. Uh, and that was on Latrig house here. It's um, so hidden away. I think it's actually it's a, a working farm down there. Just poking out there. So you've got this valley here and to get here you've got to basically drive all the way to Threlkeld which is over there and then come back along. Uh, take a path, uh, take a road that comes down to where the railway is and then back up again and round and it's a hell of a journey for for just to get there but it shows you how remote this uh, little uh, house is and again no footpaths around you've got you know quite a busy footpath here and up there is quite busy over there is quite busy but nothing in there and I believe it's um, it's fairly all quiet down there and it's private as well because it's all farming land joining the main path kind of glad because my feet are soaking i'm a bit sick of oh, walking down big steep hills oh right there we go when i say that i mean where there's no path obviously i like walking down big steep hills because i like walking up big steep hills I just wish there was a happy medium where I can walk up a fell and mountain bike down it. If anyone can invent that as a, a sport where you, you walk up camp on top and, and grab a bike off someone and uh, go down on it, it's so much fun. Talk about a load of foxgloves. There's tons of them down there. Must be the season. Anyway, I think I've made this video long enough. That was while camping up Long Scale Fell with a bit of wind and uh, dry in the morning, which is perfect. Don't have to drive, well, yeah, I do have to drive my tent out. Anyway, this has been Lost in the Lakes and we'll see you in the next one.